Hey, I go by Judy and we are here with a, another SWN True Crime Reacts. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Before I get into the good stuff, how have y'all been? I'm sorry the glare is funky with my glasses and it looks a mess in here. I'm moving. Check out my vlog on my other channel to see all about that mess. But yeah, how y'all been? Let me know in the comments. Okay, y'all. So we are reacting to the fifth um the second to last episode of the playboy murders are y'all excited did you check out the latest episode it's crazy what people would do for money craziness i appreciate y'all for watching and commenting again make sure y'all like subscribe we are so close kind of to 100 and i appreciate y'all so much let's get into our fifth episode of the playboy murders this episode is called The Girl with the Star Tattoo, which is about the unsolved case of Star Stowe. Also, let me know if y'all want me to cover this story. It seems kind of interesting. Let's get into it. It was a huge deal to be a Playboy centerfold back in the 70s, and Star Stowe was at the center of that. Star was different from the other girls, and she loved that. Sadly. That mm -hmm. rarely happens in this world. I think I've seen that picture with Kiss. She's iconic. Jeff made it very clear to Star that this is what you had to do if you wanted to keep this lifestyle. It was really an indoctrination. You were groomed oh, to God. be a certain way. He admitted that he drove her to a location and dropped her off for a rendezvous. It's quite a coincidence, what do you think? At this point, it's really starting to look like this could be the work of a serial killer. If you go... This is about to be good. Rest in peace to my girl. Okay, we're in Florida. It was the 16th of March. I received a phone call to respond to a scene. Upon examination of the body, they found that she had been strangled. Mm. I noticed she had a star tattooed on her body. And I kind of kiddingly said to the detective, you know, back in the 70s, there was a girl who was dating Gene Simmons who had a tattoo in the very same spot. She was a centerfold for Playboy. She was and dating Gene Simmons. What are the odds of that? Star Stowe was the playmate of the month in February 1977. It was a huge deal to be a centerfold back in the 70s. The sexual revolution was really at its height. The star would have been at the center of that. I, but she had no idea about the dark side of Playboy or the way things were going to go. She was from Little Rock, Arkansas, and she had a small town girl vibe. And she had aspirations of being a dancer. Aww. And a musician. She got out as soon as she could. Little Rock is such a small town. I recently went there. It's so cute. So cute. And also so sad. I feel like a lot of people from small towns have that, like, I need to get out of here type of vibe. And it always ends up something tragic happening. It's so sad. Okay, anyway. Las Vegas. It was 1975, and she was at the Sahara Hotel. And there's Gene Simmons without his makeup. I don't know how she recognized him, but she did. And they got to talking, and they kind of took a shine to each other. I like his persona on Kiss. They hit it off he almost gives me immediately and turned into a three-year-long relationship. Oh, wow. She's a young, small-town girl hanging out with some of the biggest rock stars in the world. It just must have felt like such an incredible experience. Gina had sent the pictures in, and there was a scout that went out and reported back, and from there... And if one of the photos would have come along with a recommendation from a rock star like Gene Simmons, that would have definitely stood out. Oh, that was a big, big moment. She was flown to Chicago because that's where all the main shoots for the girls was always done. In the 1970s, that's Chicago was still Chicago. the home of Playboy and its main... Playboy really seemed like a nonstop party. She was 
hanging out and partying with, with all kinds of rock stars such as Melton John, Rod Stewart, Lucky Lawless from Lost, and all this attention being paid to her, it had to have been incredible. I can imagine. The whole motif of the spread was that she was this rock and roll girl, which was incredibly it. appropriate because that's what she was. Mm -hmm. There were pictures of rock stars on the walls behind her. She was holding this blue Rickenbacker bass guitar. If you look at her face, you see the sultry baby face. So it was sort of this combination of the innocence, but yet the sultry, mm -hmm. vixen-y vibe. Nasty. She really saw herself as this radical, kick-bottom kind of rock chick. She was dating a very famous musician, so they gave her kind of this glam rock centerfold. Mm -hmm. They always put people in a niche. It's really nice to read her words in the article and kind of get a feel of who she is and what she was like. Here she says, once in L.A., she recalls, while Gene was on stage, I flashed him. I just opened my jacket for a split second, and I wasn't wearing anything underneath. Sometimes Something I just I love do. to be naughty. I think it was hard for Star. This little girl from Arkansas, she didn't know the ways of Hollywood yet. She didn't know about the mansion and what was expected. Oh, it was she a got very, caught up in the very party scary line. time. It was a dangerous time underneath and behind the closed doors. Mm. Star didn't understand much about what would happen after she was used up and there wasn't somebody there to catch her. I've noticed that's a pattern with them. Sorry, my dog keeps going back and forth. But that's a pattern with Playboy. Like once they're used up, they end up spiraling and end up getting killed or drugs or something. This is crazy. It was just a whole lifestyle. When people think of Playboy or like crazy stories from the mansion, it definitely stems from the 1970s. I bet. I think the, even in Hollywood, the coke nobody era had seen and the anything era, like it? this before. They would just be like orgies in the grotto and all kinds of crazy things happening upstairs. I was Hugh Hefner's personal valet oh. from 1978 to 82. Oh, he was fine. We would have a lot of conversations because she found out I was from Maryland. Oh, God damn me. She was from... Comes Playboy Japan centerfold of the year. What? She must have just been feeling like she was living the life. Japan? And she was. Well, she does give that Japan look. Star was different from the other girls that were living there. Would do. Oh, my God. Star was always at Hefner's table at the time in the era that I was there. She was one of the main beautiful girls. Mm. She and Hef were very close. Hef liked her personality, he liked her body, and being seen with her was good for him too. In Star's era, a lot was expected. There were definitely a strict set of rules that playmates had to follow. You're Hefner's girl, nobody else can have you. If you were a playmate of the month, that was it. You had to have scheduled sex with Hefner privately two days a week. I mean, I kind of knew this, but Jesus Christ. Two days a week? She was with Gene like, Wilder at bitches. that time. But and she, she was Gene Wilder? With him. I mean, not Gene mm. Wilder. Yeah. I think she felt she had to do it if she wanted to continue because she had heard from other playmates that you really had to sleep with Hef to advance your career. And it wasn't just Hef. Anybody that came there that was important if they came to her and chose her, then she had to sleep with him. Jesus. Had to keep you basically, his this was this was modern day in your face. It was really whorehouse. An indoctrination. You were groomed. And I love horse, but way. goodness gracious, and that he was, was grooming. Normal. Star was expected to be a plaything. Oh God. You can't keep that lifestyle up and and be okay yeah. and wake up and feel good. You know. Star was basically advised to take drugs and alcohol because you got a party and when these people want you, you have to do this. So you increase your alcohol consumption, adding more and more and more until you really don't care what you do. We got to stop here. Let's discuss. Okay, y'all. Um, it's a whole lot, a whole lot. So, this case is about Star Stowe. Star was born Ellen Louise Stowe on March 19th, 19, 1956. 
in Little Rock, Arkansas. She always had this small town girl vibe. Super cool, super cute. Um, she loved music and dancing. And in that time, in the 70s, that's what everybody wanted to do. And that's what she wanted to pursue. When she was a teenager, she moved to Las Vegas and then to Los Angeles where she worked as a stripper. I think sometime in there, she ended up spotting gene from kiss and she ended up dating him for three years and he was like babe you need to submit your photos to playboy and from there she ends up getting into playboy and becomes um playboy of the month in february 1977 i believe apparently she was the first playboy with a visible tattoo the first playboy with her legs spread miss mama was doing it big she even was playboy of the year in japan booked and busy so Apparently, you know how Hugh Hefner is. You have to sleep with him. Um, so now we're getting in the time where she's in the mansion and she's sleeping with Hugh, of course, because she's one of his main girls. And also, she's sleeping with other business partners that he was telling her to sleep with. And like one of the one of her friends, like she's vented to him, and she's like, I don't want to sleep with them. They're gross. And now she's opening up saying that she's doing like drinking so much. He was telling her, well, maybe you should drink more, do more drugs. All this crazy grooming stuff. Y'all know he was main one groomer. Yeah. Yeah. Meet the predators. This is crazy. But apparently she was murdered. And we're going to figure out more information on that. She was murdered in Florida in 1997 at the age of 40. So we're going to hear more about her story leading up to that. But right now we're getting to the drug background. It was also in the 70s. And you know, the 70s was known for some booger sugar. So where the fucking below at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Um, but she was so beautiful. Definitely. I, I That's why I said like she gives the Japan like I maybe I've seen her before. I don't know. But let's get back into it. Let's go. Open bar at all times. And they also had extensive drugs. There yeah. was always drugs. There were certain places they would keep the drugs, and Star would go to these places. She knew where to open the box. Would usually give the girls qualities. That was his thing. What the hell is that? It was a date rape drug, basically, which would make her relaxed and lethargic. <coughs> After she was just in a haze. Oh my God. Star was really a fish out of water. She was brought into this environment where, you know, if things are starting to go off the rails, 20 her, years old now. Notice, you know, her family and her friends are close by. All them men telling you to do crazy ass stuff. Trust At me. one time, she told me, I, I think I'm addicted to Coke because oh I can't sleep. How do I kick this stuff? I don't, I don't know how to go cold turkey. Really hard for her to be in a relationship with Jean because of all the other stuff going on. And Jean was also a womanizer and he was in the mansion a lot. And I think it was hard for Star because she really wanted him to be all hers. Not he in the mansion too. That she was having problems with Jean because uh, he seemed to be a purist. Jean always claimed that he never did any drugs. So when he found out that mm. up at the mansion she was doing coke, he was um. very angry with her. And so she was always torn between Jean's world or and world. Hefner's world mm. where there were so many drugs. Who knows what goes on behind? And he eventually moved on. Right. Star had such a hard time when it was over with Jean. That whole flower child thing kind of disappeared and she became extremely wild, you know, Aww. just really out of control. It was really sad to watch. She woke up after a while and realized that she wasn't getting out of it what she wanted, but Playboy definitely was getting what they wanted mm -hmm. out of her. It's too late to change once you get wrapped up in Playboy. As a palm. Especially if they've gotten you addicted to drugs and alcohol. It became a, a real nightmare. She realized that there was another crew coming up. Mm -hmm. There was always turnover because once you... It makes me think of House Bunny where she was like, I'm 25 my age. 
and they kicked her out because she was too old. That's kicking me out. I hate to say this, Shelly, but maybe it's because of your age. But I'm 27. Yeah, but that's 59 in bunny years. Like, if you get too old, boop, gotta go. Start to lose that perfect 18, 19 year old skin. They see that you're not that fresh, young girl next door. You pretty much are old. Young. You're just a child, but in their world, you know, you're used up. The more you know. Three years after her centerfold came out, things were going downhill very fast. She couldn't handle all this that was going on. And Three years. That's when she got abusive with him. I told him basically to piss off and she didn't need him. And that's the one person you can't get abusive with. Almost immediately, everything was Playboy turned against her. And that was the end for her. The moment the star was kicked out, it must have just felt like she lost everything. Mm -hmm. Even if bad things were happening to Star at the mansion, that was all she knew at that time. Those were the only people she knew in L.A. That was her income. That was her job. It was everything. She didn't have any outside resources. In 1981, she married Peter Maligo, who was an aspiring musician, rock musician, of course. They had a son. Aww. And within a couple of days after giving birth, he forced her to go out and start stripping so that they could make money. Oh my God. Uh, they still wanted to see the star. That was at her bikini line. And Peter Maligo was not great. I don't think it's a great relationship when you have a baby and then you know, a few days later your husband's like, you need to go back out and strip exactly. and dance for a living, you know, because they needed to pay bills. And so- Personally, y'all, when, when I decide I have my kids, put me up, take care of me. Having a baby is hard work, okay? If you want me to be the best mom I can be, let me be that. Force me to hit the pole, get back to work, it's insane. She and the husband split. My granddad would never. But she got older and that rock and roll lifestyle with the alcohol and the drugs was catching up to her. It was eating her up certain place and you've been told for so many years you're only good for one thing it can feel very differently she needed to pay her bills she needed to have a roof over her head she didn't have the body and the beauty by hollywood standards anymore but she still could have sex and still make money by using her body for sex oh, wow. and it is this dire need to survive that led star stowe to become a prostitute she was a survival sex woman that prostitute word is so that's harsh. Indefinite. Like, it's full service sex work. Like, it's okay. But damn. That's usually how it goes, though. And my best friend and I always talk about it. Like, people never have, like, a plan. And that's a big problem. People don't know how to plan. So, Playboy. Oh, you can't do this. It's going to take its toll on you. And she just said, I can handle it. I can quit anytime I want, but you can't. She had hoped that she might be able to stop someday, but she needed to drink and do drugs so she didn't have to think about it and didn't have to feel it. Okay, we'll stop here. Let's recap. Okay, so we are here with the second part of Playboy Murders. We are talking about Star Stowe. Okay, so now we're at the part I was talking about recently where she was already getting heavily affiliated with drugs. So apparently Jean um, was not into her doing the drugs. He was very much against drugs. I did not know that. So he broke up with her and apparently he was a womanizer. And he always frequented the Playboy house. So I know that felt very weird for her to be like around, but also she probably didn't care that much because she was high and she was also getting her rocks off. So who knows? Who knows what sexual pleasures they were into? But she was just known for her being like out of the, out of the box, extra, like she even wore a pamper and a, with a pacifier. Like she was just so extra out of the like, yeah. 
he made her like his main girl and when that comes with that it comes with grooming and it comes with a lot of drugs so she got addicted to drugs to the point she spiraled and she even told like his main driver that she feel like she was addicted to coke sadly and that made her like i said spiral and spiral out of control end up having a big fallout with hugh hugh cut her off kicked her out the house and you know what that means little she had no source of income had nowhere to go she ended up going back to las vegas where she ends up getting married she got married to a peter maliago i believe and had a son michael and y'all like i said literally months after that thing they didn't even say months i didn't say weeks after the baby was born peter told her to go back on that pole like some stevie and jocelyn stuff So here she goes, trying to make a living for her, her, the whole family on the pole. Goes from there. So she's older, and also they said the drugs had an effect like on her body and stuff. So she wasn't looking how everybody else was looking. She went to Florida, Fort Lauderdale. And so now we're in 86, 1986, Fort Lauderdale. And she just couldn't really get the gigs she used to. And because like, you know, she was getting older and, and the competition was getting crazy. So it went pushed her to do survival s work to provide for her son and from there we're now getting into her dibbling dabbling still with drugs because she still drugs and alcohol because she's not sober and doing full service sex work so we're now into this we're now i think her and peter got a divorce eventually before that um this is so sad just seeing the downfall and just Hugh pushing drugs on people and just ugh. I know he burning. Anyway. <laughs> Let me get me some cider. Let's continue. Let's go. With her mom in Arkansas because she just felt like he deserved a better upbringing than what she was able to provide. Aww. And then in 1990, Star was jailed for drug possession. Oh, wow. And she said, I had such high hopes and now they're gone. I did it to myself and it's a nightmare. But when I get home, I get to go be the old me. I get to be by my son and go to church, and it will be good someday. Aww, yeah, I hope. I can have this idea, like, I want to change my life, but then when the rent's due, you know, there's just so much stacked against her. Exactly. Star was last seen getting into a car in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Jeez. The next day, Star was found dead. And I wonder, does Hugh, did Hugh feel yeah, any type of guilt? Someone that is trying to get back on the right track. And a couple of days before Star was found murdered, they got into a fight. Oh, wow. And she ended up with this nasty bump on her head and she got away from him. Now he was abusive now. We knew we had to speak with this guy. Highly intoxicated, she fell down and actually got the bump on her head no he, feels, he was very he upset that girl. he obviously had a very i guess if they feel like he did the police were working hundreds of leads they're out there i think oftentimes sex workers like star or targets because they're seen channel. as people who don't have a hence the start of this channel a lot of close friends and family around them that's what they think who are kind of lost in the system point no my girl had a pill. more of a suspect for us Spitting. That's a sorry pimp. You don't know who you dropping your girl off to. Sorry pimp. Fire. You need to be fired. How are you protecting her? Where's the protection at? It was strangled as well. It was a month before Star started. You know, they usually do that. It's like strangle. Like, I'm about to cover the case, the Chicago Strangler, and there was also a one... I think the one in New York, Rex Hearman, I think he also was known to strangle. They usually strangle ass workers. I think it has something to do with them being um, like their anger against women or something. Very interesting. At that point, we weren't convinced that serial killers operate like this. I don't know. She also was a prostitute, and at this point, it was really starting to look yeah. like this could be the work of a serial killer. 
she was strangled and they threw her body in a dumpster. And of course, right away, we wanted to look at, into that as well to see if there's any similarities. But in September, we got a call from West Palm Beach about a guy named Kevin Johnson that they had in custody. He was arrested in connection with beating a prostitute so severely that she wound up losing her eye. Oh my they God. told us that he said that he was a monster and he became very, very violent when he smoked crack cocaine. And, you know, eventually he admitted he had killed two prostitutes. He bludgeoned one to death and he stabbed the other. It was murdered. They're there happening like two every... Two that were found murdered. Two? Again, in South Florida, their bodies were found in black duffel bags on the side of the road. It wasn't Kevin Johnson. He was in jail. It's either a different serial killer They're or a set of very tragic coincidences. No, it's a serial Their names are... Like is one in California right now. In the murder cases of Kim and Sia, 12 years later, there's a big break in the case. LA, to be exact. Through fingerprints, police were able to identify a guy named Robert Fernandez. You know, I can't get that out of my head that he gave her a ride on the day she disappears. It's quite a coincidence when you I mean, him. yes. It could be him and he's a serial killer. I found out recently that the serial killer. police department have reopened this case, which I think is pretty significant. Good. In 97, DNA was still kind of new. There wasn't a whole lot we could do with it. Like today, there was very few people in the database, suspect-wise. DNA is like a whole other level now. Whew. Let's wrap up this case. Yeah. Also, on March 16th, 1997, um, a detective gets a call that a woman is face down behind a drugstore. They get to see her and they see it's a woman with a star tattoo. He was like, crazy thing is, uh, the girl that was dating Jean and from Kids had a star tattoo. She was in Playboy. And then put two and two together it was miss star stowe uh, his her dumbass pimp allegedly drove her to a gig and and before her death and this was what happened y'all anyway so they're trying to figure out who did it y'all it was so many deaths after that like so many like killings spree killings of s workers in that area the guy swore up and now the detective swore up and now he doesn't think it's a serial killer but i'm like come on the coincidence is right there um so they end up finding that this other guy well first of all they detected that her pimp could have been one because they found his uh white van and it was scraped of everything sus yeah but they let it go because they didn't have any evidence so they go to another guy Kevin Johnson, I think his name is. And they were like, he's a messy killer. He liked to stab. And it is very true. Like, if you, you stick to uh, one, unless you're a chaotic killer. Yeah. And then they had this other guy, I'm forgetting his name. And they believe it wasn't him uh, because of, like, his... I think his name is Robert. I don't know. Um, his, ev like, his fingerprint evidence was on, like, some of the murders. But he ended up dying in a car, not in a car, a plane crash. So karma got him right on out of here. Got him! <laughs> so that happened. He's out. Um, but they figured he didn't kill Star Stowe because he wasn't in Florida at the time. I think he was a Brazilian native. Um, a Brazil native. So, yeah. They really don't know who really killed Star Stowe. Or, ultimately, the other women that uh, were found shortly after her because women were found all the way up to the 2000s so like i said i believe it is a serial killer in that area it makes me think because they like i said chicago strangler and then the the guy from new york hearman like there's so many men that target sex workers so i wouldn't be surprised if it is a serial killer doing the same thing especially if they were alcoholics and um drug users which they're vulnerable people and people like to that's double vulnerability and they're trying to pressure the vulnerable <sighs> but yeah they have yet to find stars um stows 
killer and they just recently opened the case back up so hopefully they will find more things on that i will keep an eye on this case and if it is more information i will cover it next coming up because yeah this is interesting a lot of her friends were saying like what would her life could have been if she didn't do playboy and it made me think what would her life would have been the drug era was big back then but if she was messing with gene and he was anti-drug then then maybe you know she would have had a great lifestyle but the music era was like very much drug heavy so also made me think like i don't know where her car still would have been the same but maybe not like sex focused i don't know hugh hefner was the devil child forever well, all right thank y'all so much for hanging out with me tonight with another well tonight today whatever with another sw and true crime reacts mm -mm -mm. let me know what y'all think of this series so far this case is is quite sad and it, it hurts my heart and it's just a key evidence or prime example of how predatory hugh hefner was quite disgusting let me know your thoughts i'm looking forward to um the other episode we have i believe it's the secrets of playboy so i'm interested in doing that because that's coming up next we have one more episode of this and then we'll wrap it on up make sure you hit that like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i post the next comment your thoughts because yeah this one is really crazy and it has me yeah but we double we double watching tonight so i'm gonna get ready give me some more cider and watch the final episode stay tuned i'll see y'all in the next episode bye